Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we are going to discuss uses of PCR. In the previous video, we already discussed about what is PCR and how it was actually born. Uh, what's the story behind PCR discovery? So if you want to know about that, you can go to my previous video and check that. In this video, we are going to discuss what are the uses of PCR. Where we are using this technique. So let's start. First is amplification of gene fragment. We discussed in previous lecture that PCR is actually amplification technique. So uh, we can amplify any gene fragments. Suppose this is actually the uh, DNA and we want to actually amplify that fragment. we can easily amplify this fragment of the total DNA by using PCR technique. Next is modification of DNA fragment. Suppose you want to um, modify DNA and this is actually the whole DNA and you want to modify some specific fragment of DNA like you want to modify this fragment. If you want to modify this fragment, then you have to get this fragment specifically. And for that, we use PCR. Uh, by using PCR, actually, uh, we can get this specific fragment. How we can get this specific fragment? By using PCR, we actually use primers to actually uh, amplify only this fragment. After amplifying uh, by using PCR, we can get this fragment only in amplified form in many more copies of this DNA. So after getting the uh, part of the DNA, we can modify easily it by using restriction enzymes, by using molecular scissors, what we want to do. Next is detection of pathogenic microorganisms. This is very important use of PCR. Uh, suppose uh, somebody has uh, disease and uh, we don't know that it is a viral disease or bacterial disease. What is the cause of that disease? If we want to know the cause of that disease, then we have to check that whose genetic information is present in that sample. Suppose uh, we want to check. So we, uh, what we will do, we actually um, took the sample from the patient and then we can uh, uh, extract DNA. After extracting DNA, we can actually uh, run PCR by uh, designing primers. Uh, actually, primers for specific species are present uh, online. We can just uh, order that primers. If not, then we can also um, then we can also make that primers. Uh, after uh, using that species specific primers, uh, we can get uh, the info about the um, you can say um, causative agent of that disease. So it is actually very sensitive technique to detect the presence of pathogens. Next is DNA analysis of archaeological specimens this is also uh, the same way if we want if, if we have a specimen and uh, uh, we can uh, get the dna and then uh, run the pcr and we can analyze the dna even we can uh, we can use different tools uh, or bioinformatics tools to uh, make the phylogenetic tree after getting information of their dna next is mutation detection Mutation detection relevant for the inherited disease. This is very important use of PCR and it is uh, actually the genetic study of the diseases. And it is a, uh, you can say, hot topic for nowadays. Nowadays, um, inherited studies are uh, done by using PCR very commonly. First, we, uh, we have to know that what are inherited diseases, the diseases that inherit from parents to their offspring and it inherits in generations after generations. So we have to control that diseases to make our population safe. Um, we can have two blood samples. One is uh, mutated or diseased person and second one is normal person. What we will do, uh, we will actually uh, run PCR and then DNA sequence of that uh, fragment of DNA uh, in which we uh, actually assume that the mutation may be or may not be present. After uh, 
first fragment is this and the second fragment is this this fragment is actually normal and uh, no with no disease and uh, this fragment is actually the person with disease so we can run pcr after amplifying both these fragments we can uh, dna sequence uh, by using sequencing techniques and after sequencing we can align and uh, detect uh, the mutation by comparing these two sequences after comparing we can detect that what changes are present and that changes may be the result of mutation of the disease and that change would be the mutation uh, that is present in the uh, diseased persons what are actually the benefit to detect this mutation our benefit is that we can know the uh, percentage uh, of uh, mutated allele in the population and we can know that how much uh, inherited disease is prevailing in your population mapping of hereditary traits uh, as we previously discussed that how we can make the uh, check of uh, prevalence of uh, disease in our population we can map that uh, trait or that mutation in the same way next is analysis of genetic markers for forensic applications forensic is actually very important uh, branch in which we have done paternity test or uh, uh, criminal testing like that to detect or investigate the cases so uh, in forensic applications we are using pcr we actually make genetic markers and then run pcrs and can detect the information of the paternity testing or criminal cases uh, so it is actually very useful technique in forensic applications next is species specific amplification of dna fragment a uh, species specific pcr primer or species specific markers are available we can amplify the specific dna fragment uh which are species specifics by using pcr next is study of gene expressions we can study the gene expression by using pcr suppose you want to study any uh, gene and the expression of that gene what you will do you will uh, first do actually the um you can say extraction of dna and then uh, running pcr and getting that specific uh, um, part of dna in which you are study uh, gene of interest is present after getting the gene of interest you can and this is your gene of interest after getting your gene of interest you can study the expression of that genes by using different many more techniques or bioinformatics tools this is the end of our video lesson allah hafiz